Severodonetsk. It was taken by Russia back in June. Much of it lies in ruins, with more than 80% of buildings being damaged. Yet people are slowly returning, and life is coming back to the streets. So how is life at the moment in Severodonetsk? Идет, бьют ключом. Все, окна вот делают в домах. Газ, свет, вода, все есть. Как бы так. Начинает восстанавливаться город. Все, все как бы нормально. Как вы говорят, все, все плохое мы уже пережили. This is Nikolai Morganov, the Russian-appointed mayor. Despite the daunting task of reconstruction, he tells me that the clearing of mines has been the greatest challenge. Ну, достаточно много мирных жителей погибло в период после уже, скажем так, активной фазы, потому что действительно очень много было заминировано, и они ставили мины, ну, скажем так, не просто, а с какими-то там ну, ну, умышленно усложненные и так далее, и так далее, и так далее. Количество боеприпасов было огромное. В первые дни население просто вот в полицию несли, ну, ведрами сдавали и патроны, и гранаты, и какие-то там еще вещи, которые были брошены отходящими частями ВСУ. Both Russia and Ukraine are laying thousands of mines on roads and fields and in houses. They will kill civilians long after the fighting ends. Some houses are marked with no mines. They've been cleared and marked as safe. Now, whenever I'm in areas that have been taken over by Russia here in Donbass, I find myself asking people whether they're pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian. My far the largest group are those who simply want peace to be able to rebuild their lives. The Russia-Ukraine war has brought about devastating outcomes. One year into the conflict, some 8 million Ukrainians have been displaced across Europe, which amounts to 20% of the country's population. Millions more have been displaced internally, and thousands of soldiers have lost their lives on both sides. Still, it seems the two sides will not be sitting at the negotiating table anytime soon. Jenny Melopress TV, Severodonetsk.